All right. Well, as you can see from the pictures right here, we are watching the Senate vote on the Ryan budget plan. It's expected to handle a fail. Uh, it's a $6.2 trillion plan, most notable because it would reorient, refashion, change Medicare in a very fundamental way. Uh, people who are at retirement age right now, 55 and over, they would not be impacted, but future generations would. It is highly, highly controversial. Two Republicans have already bailed and said, we're not going to approve of this. So we're expecting it to go down to defeat, but we're going to get the Willis Watchdog's opinion on this as we wait for a final vote. Matt McCall is the CEO of Penn Financial. Chris Wilson is a Republican strategist. And Fox Business's Sandra Smith joins us from the newsroom. Chris, let's start with you. What do you make of this? We had that vote last night, uh, yesterday. Uh, upstate New York seemed to suggest what might happen here today. What do you make of it? Well, I really don't think the two are all that related. I think what the vote last night up in New York shows is that special elections are exactly that special, and it doesn't mean a thing going into 2012. I mean, you look, Republicans had several ongoing defeats in special elections going into 2010 and then picked up a historic number of seats. The, I think the functional consequences of it are is you're going to have a complete demagoguing of the Medicare issue moving into the next election because there's going to be an attitude that whoever scares seniors the most is going to be able to win the election, win that specific well, that's election. Already that's already started. I think unfortunate. It that's has what, already I mean, started. I'm telling right. you, you saw the ad, right? Uh, this <laughs> ad that was out where they literally throw grandma <laughs> off the side of a hill. Matt, uh, what do you make of this? Do you agree that Medicare needs to be reformed? Oh, yes, it has to be reformed. I mean, it, you, I don't think anybody can stand here right now and say it, it doesn't need to be reformed. I mean, look at the amount of money that we're hemorrhaging on that. Uh, that entitlement program is really what's putting us in a major deficit that this country is in right now. And it's not going to end anytime soon with the baby boomers expanding going into you know, the retirement age. So this is a major issue. It must be revamped. Is this the way to go about it? Probably not. But you know what? I have to really commend Ryan for this because he's starting somewhere. And that's what we need to do. We need to start somewhere. This gets shot down, but it will open discussion, I hope. Hey, Sandra, what does Wall Street make of this? Does, do professional traders want to see these programs reformed? Hey, yeah. I mean, you, you take a walk into the CME group floor in Chicago, the New York Stock Exchange here in New York, and everybody can agree we've got to do something about these entitlement programs. I mean, you know, Medicare, Medicaid is just draining the system, Jerry. So everybody can agree that something has to be done. Paul Ryan was the guy who stepped up and said, I know this could be political suicide, but somebody's got to do it. And a lot of people are praising him for finally doing that. But at the end of the day, you know that those scare tactics are in place, like grandma being thrown off a cliff. The, sticks, the scare so tactics bad. are there and it's tough. Well, you know, Matt, I think a lot of people out there worry they're going to become the next Greece if we don't take, you know, we have the opportunity to do it now. Yes. Do you think Washington will have the guts to make the changes? Unfortunately, I don't think they will, Jerry. And the reason behind that is people who work in Washington keep their job by getting reelected. By cutting back spending, typically you're taking away spending and taking away money from the area that you're getting elected. So you're going to end up hurting the people that are voting for you at the end of the day. Even though everybody says we, they want change, they want to stop the spending, they want to get rid of the debt, they do not want to stop spending in their area. So I think, no, I think at the end of the day, politicians want to be reelected, therefore they won't cut it. So, Chris, to you, uh, you know, I, I've been watching so with just bated breath here, Harry Reid saying, hey, we don't need to introduce a budget. The Democrats don't have to do that. We don't have to make any suggestions for Medicare. We don't really have to do anything except just wait out these silly Republicans and all their fly-by-night ideas. Are you guys getting painted into a corner with what is one of the biggest hot tamales in terms of issues uh, that you could possibly be handed? Well, like I said, I think what it does is it takes the political discourse to a level that none of us really want to see in the sense that it becomes all about demagoguing and scaring voters. And I would suggest one of the reasons Republicans were successful in 2010 is they were able to make a functional, logical argument as to why they were better right. able to deal with specific issues. And that's being taken off the table because of things like what Harry Reid is doing. Throwing Chris, up his hands and saying, let's just wait and see and let the Republicans get out there first. Chris, let me interrupt you. We've got to vote now. Uh, Paul Ryan's budget went down, the vote 57 to 40. It was not successful. It was expected to fail. It did fail. Chris, can you read anything into those numbers? What does that tell you? 57 to 40. Well, I think it's pretty much what you expected. From uh, the Democrats towed the party line, you had two Republicans who switched sides and voted with the Democrats on it. And it brought, you have a lot of voters who took a, or a lot of senators who took a hard look at their reelection efforts and looked at last night's elections and probably made some political calculations there. I think what it does say, though, is going back to the larger issue here, is that nothing's going to be done about this in the immediate future. And at least what Paul Ryan did, and even Bill Clinton praised him for it, is he put something forward and something's got to be done about this eventually. 
and now the Democrats are going to have to be st or step up and come up with their own plan. If they don't do that, I think it does put them in a, I put, think it paints them into an even worse corner than maybe Republicans may have been painted into in last night's election. Well, you know, I think it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out. What we do know now, more news on this, five Republicans voted against this plan. Matt, I don't think the uh, Republicans can hold their own here. No, they can't, but I have to tell you, I'm still impressed by that 40 number, even though the Republicans voting, those 40 Republicans who voted for it, knew it wasn't going to pass at the end of the day, but they have to get reelected. So when they go to get reelected, whoever they're going against can say, you know what, this person right. wanted to push Graham over the edge. All right, we're going we're gonna to leave it there. Uh, the Obama budget being voted on right now. We're going to give you the details of that. Matt, Chris, and Sandra, thank you so much. Really appreciate your time. Thank you.